In this video, we're going to look at equilibrium. I did a demonstration in class that you will want to ha at least have explained to you. So if you did not see the fishbowl demonstration in class, make sure that you uh, come by and let me explain that to you. All right, so let's talk about what happens when something is a system is at equilibrium. We have the amounts of reactants and the amounts of product don't change anymore. And we saw that in that fishbowl demonstration that even though the amounts aren't necessarily equal, that they stop changing, the amounts stop changing. And so let's look at this example reaction. This is nitrogen plus hydrogen and that creates ammonia. You'll probably notice that it has this uh, funky arrow, the double half arrows. That tells you that it's an equilibrium system. So if you look at this graph, you can see that this is a graph of time on the x-axis and concentration on the y-axis. So the concentration of the reactants and products depend on how much time has passed. At the beginning of the reaction, you'll see that the amounts of nitrogen and hydrogen, hydrogen at the top and nitrogen at the bottom, are at their highest. And at the beginning of the reaction, because it's all reactants that you're putting together, there is none of the product, which is ammonia. As time passes, the amounts of hydrogen and nitrogen begin to decrease. And the, as the reaction moves in the forward direction, then the ammonia begins to be made and it starts to increase. And then over time, eventually what happens is the amount of hydrogen stops changing and the amount of nitrogen stops changing and the amount of ammonia stops changing. And the reason that this happens is because as you start moving in the forward direction making the ammonia, the reverse reaction occurs with ammonia returning to nitrogen and hydrogen. And it first happens in very small amounts, but as time progresses, it continues until the rates of the two reactions are equal. So the forward and reverse reactions at equilibrium are both occurring, but they're occurring at the same rate. So when you think about the fishbowl demonstration, remember that the cups, even though they were different sizes, held the same amount of water. That was showing our reaction rate. And so we call this dynamic equilibrium. Dynamic meaning it is still changing. And if you look at this graph, it shows on the x-axis it is time again. And then on the y-axis, it is the reaction rate. So as you start the reaction, the forward rate is really high because the reactants are the only things you've put in, and they're going from reactants to products. But as you start to make more product, then the reverse reaction starts to occur. And eventually, the rate of the forward and the reverse reaction end up being equal. And that's when we say that a system is at equilibrium. So let's talk about what equilibrium constants are. An equilibrium constant tells us a little bit about how the reaction works. So we can calculate this by measuring the concentrations of each of the things involved, each of the reactants and products involved, and then we figure out the ratio of the products to reactants. And KEQ is our symbol for equilibrium constant. And if that is greater than 1, then we say that the reaction favors the products. If KEQ, or the equilibrium constant, is less than 1, then we say that the reaction favors the reactants. And I'll show you what that means. So if we have a reaction, and you can see this is just a generic reaction, some number of molecules of A plus some number of molecules of B, double half arrow, gives us some number of molecules of C plus some number of molecules of D. Then the expression for calculating the equilibrium constant is the concentration of each of the products. So C and D are on top. And that concentration is raised to the power of its coefficient. And so C to the C power times the concentration of D to the D power divided by our reactants, so A to the A power, and then B to the small b power. So those concentrations to the power of the coefficients of those uh, reactants or products in the reaction. 
So let's look at some examples of this. All right, so let's write the equilibrium expression for this reaction. So remember that for KEQ, the reactants go on the bottom and the products go on top. So when we set this up, we're going to say that KEQ is equal to the concentration of ammonia, which is our product, and we're going to put it, that to the second power squared because it's got a coefficient of 2. And then we're going to divide by the concentration of nitrogen, and that's got a coefficient of 1, so it doesn't get a, an exponent. And then we're going to multiply that by the concentration of hydrogen, and that's cubed because that has a coefficient of 3. So let's take a look at that. And you can see that that's the way the expression looks. So products over reactants. So when we say that a reaction favors the products, you can see that the concentration of the products would be greater than the concentrations of the reactants if KEQ is greater than 1. And that's why we say products are favored if KEQ is greater than 1. If KEQ is less than 1, it means that the, there are more reactants. So we say that the reaction favors the reactants. Now, one thing to remember about equilibrium constants is we only use the things in the equation that are gas and AQ. Anything that is a solid or a liquid, we do not use. So when we write the equilibrium expression for this reaction, we're going to leave out the carbon. So take a minute and try to put this one into the uh, equation for KEQ. Pause the video, and then I'll show you the answer. Okay, so let's take a look. Remember not to include the solid on this one. There are no coefficients here, so none of our, uh, none of our uh, concentrations have an exponent in this one.